Welcome back to Hardware Unboxed. Today, I'm shifting focus a little bit after a few weeks of testing monitors nonstop because I think it was a couple of weeks ago now that Intel launched a new collection of 9th generation H series processors for gaming and high performance laptops. So that of course means we need to revisit laptops to see how these new chips stack up. Intel's last couple of product lines have been a bit confusing with multiple code names and architectures split across different series. Current U-series chips for ultra-portable laptops are still branded as 8th gen and are codenamed Whiskey Lake, while these H-series chips get a bump up to 9th gen and form part of Coffee Lake Refresh, the same as current desktop CPUs. Most of Intel's 9th gen laptop parts aren't particularly exciting and don't add much new to the table. The Core i5s are still 4-core 8-thread parts, and the Core i7s are still 6-core 12-thread models. We're still on 14 nanometers with whatever number of pluses we're up to now. The iGPU is also the same, not that anyone cares much about that in this sort of form factor that's typically paired with a discrete GPU. Where the improvements are coming depends on the CPU. For the Core i5 models, we're getting very modest clock speed jumps. The 9300H is just 100 megahertz higher for its base and boost clock, while the 9400H doesn't even get a base clock increase, just an additional 100 megahertz increase to the boost. Meanwhile, the level three cache of eight megabytes stays the same same. For the Core i7s, we do get a cache increase from 9 megabytes to 12 megabytes, and the 9750H has received the biggest clock jump relative to the 8750H. It goes from a 2.2 gigahertz base and 4.1 gigahertz boost to a 2.6 gigahertz base and 4.5 gigahertz boost. So that's a 400 megahertz increase across the board. The 9850H is more modest again, with no base clock gain and 300 megahertz extra on the boost. Given the 8750H and now the 9750H are the most commonly used H-series processors, especially for the majority of gaming notebooks, I do find these specification breakdowns interesting. The 9750H sits a lot closer to the 9850H than the corresponding 8th gen parts, and the 9750H is the only chip to get between 10 and 20% clock speed increases. It looks like Intel has targeted gains for this CPU specifically, knowing how popular it is, to ensure that at least some 9th gen parts deliver actual performance increases. And then of course what I haven't talked about yet are the new Core i9 models, which are indeed 8 cores and 16 threads to match the top end Core i9 desktop models. The i9-9980HK can even reach 5 GHz like the 9900K within a 45 watt TDP supposedly. These 8 core Core i9s replace the single 8th gen Core i9 uh, which was still a six core part just with higher clocks. While it is interesting to see eight core CPUs come to laptops in a claimed 45 watt TDP, Intel do state they are targeting muscle books with these chips. Of course, Intel just made up muscle books as a product category for this CPU launch, but basically it means those super chunky beast gaming laptops rather than the more mid-tier or slim offerings that most people buy. This leaves the Core i9 as more a niche CPU rather than an eight core laptop CPU accessible to all. As you might've seen from the title of this video, the focus today is on the Core i7-9750H, which is the new mainstream H-series laptop processor that will be seen in many, many gaming laptops. Outside of the eight core ones, it's probably the most exciting chip as well, given the larger than usual clock speed increases and its widespread use. Specifically, I wanna focus on the difference between the 9750H and the 87 7050H, given I think this will be on the mind of most buyers looking at grabbing a new laptop, especially with the staggered releases between Nvidia on the GPU side and Intel on the CPU side, many laptops are available with the same GPU inside, but a choice between the 9750H or the 8750H. A final word on the spec stuff before digging into some performance stuff. I know this has been dragging out a little bit, but there is a lot to get through. Uh, Intel does list the maximum turbo clock for the 9750H at 4.5 gigahertz, although this only applies to a single core. With two cores active, it drops down to 4.4 gigahertz, then it follows down in 100 megahertz increments for each additional active core, down to four gigahertz for six cores active. This differs again from the 8750H, which allows 4.1 gigahertz on two cores, four gigahertz on up to four cores, then 3.9 gigahertz on six cores. So when the 9750H is fully utilized on six cores, its maximum turbo clock does end up only 100 megahertz higher than the 87 50H. This is also something to keep in mind and shows that a good portion of Intel's improvements here have targeted single or low core count usage. 
For testing the Core i7-9750H, I received two laptops, one from Gigabyte and the other from MSI. The Gigabyte model is the Aorus 15, which features a new 240Hz display, but is a little loud on the cooler side with somewhat an annoying cooler noise profile. The MSI option is the GE75 Raider, a larger 17-inch machine. Both occupy that sort of mid-size, mid-tier option in the market, so it's nice and refreshing not to test a cooling-restricted slim and light for the first time around here. For other hardware, both are equipped with the NVIDIA GeForce RTX 2070 laptop GPU, so that's the full laptop variant, not Max-Q. We're also getting 16 gigabytes of dual channel DDR4 2666, which is the maximum speed the 9750H supports. Again, no movement with these new CPUs towards supporting higher frequencies. Both have 1080p displays as well and fast NVMe SSDs. The first thing I want to explore, and this is crucial for the rest of the performance section, are power limits and clock speeds. Laptops are a highly restricted form factor, so even if Intel gives a CPU the option to run it up to 4GHz across 6 cores, power limits will almost always prevent the CPU from actually hitting those clocks in long-term workloads, unlike with fully unleashed desktop systems. What we've seen over the last few years with Intel's H-series products is that OEMs tend to ignore the actual TDP ratings in favour of higher PL1 and PL2 limits, which pushes up clock speeds. With quad-core Core i7-7700HQ laptops, we typically saw PL1, or the longer-term turbo limit, sitting around 45 watts. With the i7-8750H, in many laptops that jumped up to 52 watts or thereabouts, which is notably higher than the actual 45-watt TDP, with time limits removed as well. I'm not going to get into the whole TDP argument about whether this is in-spec or out-of-spec behaviour, but at the end of the day, OEMs felt that they could handle the new 6-core CPUs in their designs with a higher power limit, and to achieve better performance, they allowed it. And with the i7-9750H, we're again seeing around a 52-watt PL2 limit, although in the MSI model it is a little higher at around 54 watts. Not a big difference there, though. PL2 limits have also increased a bit to allow the higher short-term turbo frequencies. My i7-9750H test laptops were configured to 80 watts, compared to 70 watts for a typical 8750H. But the real story here is that PL1 limit. Given the 9750H is basically the same architecture, built on the same process node with the same core configuration, we can't really be expecting higher real-world clock speeds within the same power limit. And that's basically what we get in terms of actual clock speeds. The Core i7-8750H in my Gigabyte Aero 15X9 sits around 3.1 GHz long term in a Cinebench R20 run after initially hitting 3.3 GHz. The Core i7-9750H in my Gigabyte Aorus 15 sits around 3.1 GHz long term in a Cinebench R20 run after initially hitting 3.3 GHz. So in other words, identical behavior. So when we look at Cinebench R20 performance, lo and behold, both systems perform roughly the same in the multi-threaded test. The MSI model does clock slightly higher and therefore performs slightly better, but not considerably so. The simple fact is it takes more than simply increasing clock speeds on paper to achieve a real-world performance improvement when every other aspect of the CPU remains the same, including its power limitations. And this is what we'll see throughout these performance charts. Here's another one for Cinebench R15 with a much wider range of systems in the charts. The MSI model performs well in the multi-threaded test, but crucially, it's not the fastest system and actually gets beaten by an ASUS laptop with the i7-8750H inside. The Gigabyte model is more middle of the pack. It's not slow, but it's nothing really special. It is a little more favorable to the MSI model in the single-threaded test where it clocks in 13% faster than the average Core i7-8750H result. That's those higher single-core clocks coming to play. In X264 encoding, the Core i7-9750H laptops do perform well in pass 1, but the Gigabyte system falls back to the pack in the second pass. The MSI model is outright fastest, but is only very slightly ahead of the well-performing ASUS models to the tune of just 1%. Not exactly the upgrade some would be wanting here. Handbrake is similar, this is a long test that falls almost entirely under the PL1 limit, and again, the MSI model performs well, but it's not the outright fastest system, and gets beaten by two ASUS i7-8750H models. The Aorus 15 is no faster than Gigabyte's Aero 15 X9. My Premier benchmark with Lumetri effects, while it does utilize the GPU somewhat, becomes CPU limited after you're running a GTX 1060 or so. So once again, we're in a situation where the MSI model is not the fastest, but performs well, while the Gigabyte model is no different to most typical Core i7-8750H laptops. 
You've probably seen a chart like this the previous few times. Adobe Photoshop with the CPU limited iris blur effect is a good showing for the 9750H, but isn't ultimately faster than the 8750H. Finally, we see something slightly different in 7-zip. The two Core i7-9750H laptops sit atop the charts, but only just. The Gigabyte model is only 1% faster than the fastest 8750H laptop, while the MSI model fares a little better, slotting in 4% faster. Not earth-shattering margins and unlikely to sway anyone to a 9th gen system. MATLAB doesn't benefit from the Core i7-9750H over the Core i7-8750H. Same performance depending on which two systems you directly compare. I'll also just quickly show PC Mark 10 here, a bit of a mess because each system has a different GPU and the test isn't a pure CPU workload, but once again, you can't really see a much separation between the 9750H systems and other systems. Final few charts for now really just summarize the whole situation nicely. Here we have the Gigabyte Aorus 15 with its Core i7-9750H pitted against the average Core i7-8750H result. We're seeing a tiny 2.8% performance gain on average, and that evaporates to a performance deficit when compared to one of the fastest Core i7-8750H laptops I've tested, an ASUS Strix SCAR 2 variant. The results are a little more favorable for the MSI model, 8% faster than the average Core i7-8750H laptop is a strong result, and there are particularly good results in Cinebench single thread and 7-zip compression. But compared to a fast Core i7-8750H variant, and that margin is cut to just 4%, which probably isn't going to cut it for most buyers. Something I haven't really talked about is how the Core i7-9750H stacks up against the quad-core Core i7-7700HQ because that will be a common upgrade path for a lot of buyers. As the 9750H is very similar to the 8750H, we're looking at up to 50% gains or higher in some workloads with an average in this selection of tasks of 42%. For gaming, unfortunately, I don't have a lot to say on this topic yet because the two laptops I received to review both had RTX 2070s in them, which is a GPU I never tested alongside the i7-8750H or really any other laptop CPUs. Without a good apples to apples comparison, there's really no good data to show here. However, my generalized impression so far is that like with the productivity workloads, there hasn't been any progress in gaming performance when CPU limited. CPU heavy games like Hitman 2, aren't really faster than expected, and the 9750H doesn't have noticeably higher clock behavior than the 8750H in games. At best, I anticipate maybe a 5% improvement depending on the models you are comparing, but there are a lot of variables at stake here, and having, say, only single channel memory will make a much larger impact than having the 8750H over the 9750H. So at this point, I think a lot of you can guess what the conclusion to this video will be. I can't say I'm surprised at this outcome given the foundations for the new Core i7-9750H are identical to the Core i7-8750H, but with Intel showing up to 400 MHz increases in base clocks and boost clocks, which admittedly dropped to as low as 100 MHz when looking at the full clock table, I was expecting a little more, and I think a lot of buyers might be expecting more than is actually being delivered. The reality is, from the data I've collected, I can't honestly say the Core i7-9750H is definitively faster than the Core i7-8750H in real-world OEM implementations. It's looking like the two CPUs are about equal in general, and at best, the 9750H is slightly faster if you get a favorable matchup between two laptops. But it might also be slower, as evidenced by comparing my Gigabyte 9th Gen test systems to some last gen ASUS laptops. This presents a bit of a tricky situation for laptop buyers. To figure out which of two given systems is faster, you'll have to dig into specific model reviews and comparisons. This is similar to making a choice between laptops within a generation, rather than what usually happens when comparing across generations. For example, it was clear that laptops with the Core i7-8750H were faster than those with the previous Core i 7 HQ, which made that choice quite easy. But here, there's no clear distinction. With that in mind, I think it's fair to say that in general, there's not much difference between the 8750H and 9750H. So if an 8750H system with otherwise equal specs is cheaper than a new 9750H system, you'd have to pick the last gen model. And well, that's not great news for OEMs that have spent time specifically building new 9750H laptops and have often discounted their last gen offerings. It's really a bit of a pointless product. We would have been fine continuing on with the same performance from the trusty old 8750H.
That's not to say it's necessarily a bad product, because if you do find a 9750H laptop at a good price, it shouldn't be notably slower than a typical 8750H system, and will definitely provide a big performance jump over 7th gen laptops or older. But it's not something you'd upgrade to from an 8th gen Core i7, and you really shouldn't believe it's faster just based on the spec sheet, at least with the way OEMs implement these processes these days. So yeah, that's the Intel Core i7 9750H. I think the real interest in the 9th gen line for laptops is with those new 8 core CPUs, although we're unlikely to see them in these sorts of form factors that I looked at today with the MSI and Gigabyte models. Speaking of these laptops, quite like the MSI model, it's nothing super special or crazy, but it gets the job done and is decently powerful. Really like the 240Hz display on the Aorus 15, but the cooler noise ended up grinding my gears by the end of the review process, so not as much of a fan of that particular model. As always, you can subscribe for more laptop content and other reviews. Consider supporting us on Patreon to get access to some cool live streams and other stuff. Might be a good idea to jump on board before Computex, and I'll catch you in the next one.